Welcome back, MTG Joe here. And today we're gonna to be doing kind of a instructional kind of feedback video on how to build a sideboard, how to approach building a sideboard, and then how to kind of give thought in terms of how you would sideboard ahead of going into the games. Um, that's a question that often comes up is like, hey, you got a sideboard guide for this deck? Um, but really the skill here is learning how to approach sideboarding in games as well as uh, knowing what to put in ahead of time because when you're on the clock in best of three and you have you know two minutes you got to put stuff in and out uh, having a kind of preconceived board plan does help you kind of see where you're kind of approaching it also what is helpful is to see you know do we have too many cards for one particular matchup or not enough cards for another matchup so I'm going to kind of do this with one of the decks that I've been playing a lot of in best of one this is a deck I got to mythic with very quickly this past month um, this is my mono, my take on mono white exile aggro. Um, so this deck is kind of a mono white aggro deck. And what I'm going to kind of do is approach it in terms of looking at mono white versus three of the most prevalent decks um, in standard right now. So if we consider at that point, we have mono green, mono white, and then the is it decks, whether it be epiphany or dragons. Now, the board plan for Dragons and Epiphany might be slightly different, and as we're building out our sideboard, we'll kind of look at that. So basically, um, the core of the deck, we have to give a consideration to what our deck's doing game one. And we are a low-to-the-ground aggro deck that has some elements of creature-based exile in the form of Brutal Cathar, Skyclave Apparition, and Portable Hull. Uh, things that our deck is weak against would be sweepers. Uh, in particular, if we have, like, uh, Cinderclasm, Blood on the Snow, stuff like that. The way we get around that is having taxing effects. Stuff like Elite Spellbinder or Redain to make the stuff cost more. What we don't have in the deck game one is card advantage. Um, so game one, we're trying to go very linear, try to interact but also apply pressure, and then try to kill them that way there. We have creature lines as well in this deck here. One thing to be mindful of is the amount of lands you have in a deck when you're approaching this. We have 23 lands in this particular deck. So in terms of the sideboard, this is something I threw together off a first go around. And my thoughts are at first level, I want stuff first control and then stuff first the creature mirrors. Um, so Curse of Silence to name like Allrin's Epiphany or Sweeper effects. Paladin's class to slow down instant speed interaction. Also, it's something we could sink mana into. Cathar Commando, uh, it's a good flash threat against uh, control, like post sweeper, but it's also we can blow up an artifact or enchantment. So Chariot, for example, or Ranger's class, or opponent's paladin classes, or Maul the Skyclaves, so stuff like that. Um, we have Adeline versus the control matchups, so if there's three base damage, we have that. It's also an army in a can. Another copy of Redain as a way to... Uh, tax your opponent. In the same case, we have another copy of Elite Spellbinder, and then we have our removal package. So another portable hole, some fateful absences, um, and then Skyclave Apparition, the fourth copy. And then against control or sweeper-based decks, we have Guardian of Faith, the kind of tempo. So how are we going to do this? That's the deck. So we are going to build out our kind of post-board game. So notice I just cloned the same deck and we're going to kind of build it for kind of the different matchups. And I encourage you to do this. It's a good exercise to see. So to start off, let's see what we want to bring in. So we're playing against mono green here. So what are we going to want? So these commandos. And I like to do it like this. Let's see what we're bringing in. Uh, we want portable hole. So that brings in an extra copy. Um, Redain is the, is questionable if we want the extra copy. I would say we want the Fateful Absences for sure. Oh, why does it do that? Fateful. It's not actually sideboarding. <laughs> One sec. So we had three Fateful Absences. Bringing those in. I don't think we want Guardian of Faith. We do want the extra copy of Skyclave Apparition. So that's seven cards coming in. So against Mono Green, what do we want to take out? Um, generally speaking, the Maul's pretty good. These Elite Spellbinders are not that good in that matchup. While they do have Flying, they then to trade with um, even like Jaspara Sentinel. So that's three cuts there. Uh, the, we have Brutal Cathar, we have the removal. 
Um, what you might want to consider is like play draw. I generally like clave uh, as a way to go over the top. So we need a couple cuts here. And this is where what like I encourage, it's like good to kind of think about it. I think we would trim one red Dane. While it does tax their snow mana, Redain often just dies in fighting. Um, so that would be something I would cut. I would probably honestly cut all the Redains against them. If they are on a uh, Ren package, it might be worth it. A lot of them do experimental growth, the enchantment that doubles power, so having this is useful. And I would probably cut the Stone Binders familiar, a couple copies of those. So this is kind of how I would approach the deck. So this would be where I would be. So if we kind of slot things into our curve, we see what we're trying to do here. So we have now four, seven, ten pieces of removal, actually more, uh, 13 pieces of removal. We have some aggressive one drops. We have some good curves too. I like sun gold because with protection, you can go through uh, the blockers on green. And then we have Skyclave and Brutal Cathar to clean up. We have Maul as our kind of finisher element. Strap it on like Intrepid Adversary, Luminarch, or stuff like that. So I think first mono green, this is how I would approach boarding. And now you can look at things like play draw. On the play, I might be inclined to have an extra copy of like Spellbinder Familiar maybe, uh, or even Redain on the plays better because you can tax their third line coming into play untapped. So that could be something you'd want to consider. Um, going something like that, you can play. I like Maul because the first strike as well, but that might just be preference. So that's kind of how I would approach that particular deck there. So we got the first one. Now let's look at Mirror. So I imagine the Mirror is going to be very similar. Um, one thing I would probably do is take out these stone binders, especially if they're on the exile based version. Um, these just tend to not be as good afterwards. So if we look at what we want in, I would play Adeline in this version. Maybe not. We'll trim an Adeline. We'll play just the two. Um, We'll move the Spellbinders to the sideboard. Again, versus the Creature Mirrors, you generally don't want Spellbinder. It, it just dies to like a lot of the cheap flyers. So we'll bring in the Fateful Absences. What else do we want? We want the Portable Hole for sure. Now, the Cathar Commando probably doesn't come in in this matchup. If they are on Paladin class, you could play it, but... I don't think you necessarily want it. Uh, I would play the Skyclave Apparition and probably the Redain as well. So you're a little bit bigger here, but you have, again, just a lot of interaction in this particular matchup. We have one more card we can bring in. I might have just deleted one. Uh, Stonebinders for, what did I cut? Oh, there should be an add a line in the sideboard when I deleted it out. Sorry. So this way you could kind of play around with it, but it's obviously not exact sideboarding. Um, so I think I'd probably bring in one Paladin class, play it somewhat like that. Guardian of Faith is something you could consider, but not great. It does allow you to flash, but you're pretty high on three drops. I would probably play it like this. And this is giving your thought, right? Again, play draw, you might want to play it differently where you do want your one drops, you don't want your one drops. If they are on a heavier Maul and like Paladin class, I would play some Cathar, uh, Cathar Commandos in there. Um, but you could kind of play around with it there. So, given thought there. Now, let's look at our control matchup. How would we apply that? So, when we look at something like this, it's giving thought, okay, so what are the weaknesses of our deck? Things that are individualistically weak or reliant. So again, in control, we don't want the Skyclaves. They don't really do anything. We may want Brutal Cathar, depending on what they're on. I don't want the Mauls. Again, something that's reliant on us attaching to a creature doesn't always work. And we generally don't want the Paladin class. So right now we have seven cards that we're willing to cut for sure. Now if we look at what we want to bring in, so we have Curse of Silence, we have Paladin class, 
Paladin class is a way you can make any of your threats really big. It's also a mana sink. What you might not want Paladin class in is against if they have um, a lot of bounce effects in the form of Divide by Zero. So that's something to consider, and that might be a reason to cut the card altogether. I like the extra copy of Adeline. I like the copy of Redain, just a way to tax your opponent. We have the Spellbinders here. And then Guardian of Fates come in. So here we're actually just only needing to cut one card here. And I think we would just cut a copy of Brutal Cathar. So I'd say move one Cathar to the side. You bring these out. Because you're not going to want to deal with like Alrin's Epiphany in that manner. The Maul of the Sky Claves probably isn't doing enough. And then this gives you an answer to most of their threats. Um, the reason I like this is because you can flip it to the knight side. And then it at least is a 3-3 first strike that has to be dealt damage. And then this can deal with Goldspan Dragon or the egg itself. If they are on egg and they are like the dragon egg, then I would play some copies of the portable hole. Um, that's an option there. Or instead of Brutal Cathar, I would play the Skyclave Apparition. Uh, just because when you exile it, you get rid of the egg for forever. You don't really care about a 2-2. Um, you care about the egg flipping afterwards. So I think versus control, I would play something like this. Uh, versus dragons, I would probably play the third Brutal Cathar over Stonebinders Familiar. And then against dragons, actually no, against dragons, I wouldn't play any Brutal Cathar. I would play the Fateful Absence. So I think that would be my switch. I'd go down one Stonebinders and then two of those. Because against dragons, you want the answer against Goldspan Dragon. If they're not on Goldspan Dragon, then I would build like this. So that's kind of the considerations uh, of what you would want to put in the deck. And this is kind of how we talk through this thought process. So we can see here, we don't have too many cards in one direction. We don't have too many cards in another direction. Um, I can maybe show this with another deck that I've played a lot. Uh, just to see, this this got a sideboard? No, that's best of one. Let me just switch. Do, do, do. Sorry, I just want to see. Okay, so similar idea. So this isn't historic, so there's different kind of concepts with it, but um, similar deck. This is a collected company creature deck. So like against graveyard decks, we have options. Against fight, we have like a creature removal enchantment. Gideons are for control. We have Faithful Absence for removal. Selfless Glyph Weaver as indestructible. So getting around sweepers. Then you have your Skyclaves and then your Yasharns are more of an answer in historic to like sacrifice decks. Um, so we could do a similar idea here, but when you're building your sideboard, you really want to consider what are the cards in my color pie that deal with certain threats. And the important thing to do is always look at your meta, like the meta decks, uh, to know what you're most commonly going to be playing against and then bringing cards for those situations. There's no exact science in practicing sideboarding is important. So you can do it like this, like we just did, where it was really no pressure in doing so. You were able to take a look, kind of try out cards, do it in, do it out. We were able to do it at a speed that's not two minutes on the clock pressuring you to get through with that. So I think that's something important to uh, look at when you are playing these types of effects. And then just practice. If there is sideboard guides, it's always helpful to look to see what they're bringing in, what they're taking out. But it's important as well to just kind of give yourself some advanced consideration in terms of how you want to approach it. Um, again, there's no exact science. You're going to try things. Some things will work. Some things won't. Uh, you've probably seen videos of mine where, you know, we're like, eh, well, maybe we'll include this. Maybe we won't. Let's see. Or, you know, depends what they're on. And your opponent could zig, you know, they're on control and you take out all your creature removal and then post board, they bring in creatures. So then you, in game three, you have to pivot and then kind of shift your focus. Um, so it's always something like that to be mindful of. But that's kind of a quick and dirty. Um, there's no kind of one size fit all. I find this approach to give thought very useful. And then as you play games and you try out these effects, you see what works, what doesn't, and kind of go from there. Um, so as always, if you do enjoy the content, uh, these kind of guides, stuff like that, do drop a like and uh, subscribe. They're all free and easy ways to help out the channel. 
Um, I do do weekly kind of meta breakdowns, which look at all the top decks in standard and historic each week based on tracked data from untapped. Uh, so those come out every Monday. And really, that gives you a good idea of what you need to be mindful of that week on the ladder, what to be playing against, what cards you should bring in, what card, kind of decks have fallen by the wayside. Um, say there's a new deck that really uses its graveyard, you're going to want graveyard effects. If there's a lot of creature decks, you're going to want more removal or stuff like that. So I find those really helpful if you do want to tune in for that. But otherwise, as always, appreciate you stopping by. Have a great one and stay safe out there.